literally next to me. It's a roadmap of our next six months. I'm a bird, mother. I'm a bird. Tabletop time is going bankrupt. And the thoughts of major kill. This is happening. It's a really special thing to me and I hold it so dear to my heart. I'm meant to be like uplifting at this stage and like move into something positive, but just f miserable. G'day guys and gal, something a bit different for you today. A bit of an unfortunate and interesting situation that is actually quite close to home. Tabletop Time, a beloved YouTube channel that focuses on the hobbying side of Warhammer, stuff like diorama builds, mini conversions, meta commentary and so on. They are also based in Melbourne, which is where I am based. I also actually met them last year when we all attended this. Okay, so before we fully start, I actually thought their channel was going well same event. They had built an insane multi-titan graveyard diorama that also doubled as a game board. So it really sucks that they recently announced that they are on the brink of going under as a company and are about to run out of money. That Basically, is weird. life's hard. It is. <laughs> We've been trying our butts off for three years to make this YouTube thing work really well and it has not been. So the band-aid rip is that things are doing really poorly. But how does this happen with a channel with a quarter of a million subscribers? Did they stuff something up big time, or is it just the YouTuber life not being as glamorous and bountiful as people assume? I'll be going over the main parts of their video, why they say they're struggling, my thoughts on what they potentially did wrong, how you could help them if you so choose to, and what they should do to save themselves. As another Warhammer content creator who has multiple employees, over a dozen contractors, and treats my YouTube like a business, I do think I'm uniquely qualified to dive into this. Oh, let's get into it. <laughs> Oh, oh, tabletop time is. Oh, that intro though. Pretty good. This is something we cannot really relate. We don't have employees. We are a teeny tiny channel that just started off, so we cannot relate to that at all. It's just a bunch of friends having fun making content. It's structured as a business and was founded by Jazza, a popular art YouTuber who wanted to dive further into his miniature hobby. Everyone who is on the channel is employed by Jazza, the three hosts, a part-time artist and editor. That's five employees, three of which would be on a full-time salary. Labor in Australia is not cheap trust me, which is a good thing for not having egregious wealth inequality, but a bad thing for small businesses whose revenue is an all-time low. At minimum, Jazza would be paying his team around $200,000 a year if everyone was on borderline minimum wage whoa, and the editor whoa. and artist didn't work. That's a lot of money. Whoa, hold on that many hours. The actual amount could be significantly higher. And that doesn't even include the cost of hiring out their studio or the cost of buying all the shit that they use to convert or paint. I think you can start to see the issue here. For me, making lore videos costs fuck all. I can pump that shit out. Damn. If a video doesn't do well, then it's like, ah oh well, learn from the experience, move on. For tabletop time, they have full-time employees making these mm. crazy project yeah. videos that take a ton of effort. And if they only get like 40,000 views, then they aren't even breaking even. They've gotten around 450,000 views in the last 30 days, which look, I know roughly what that translates to. I'm not gonna say it, but it isn't much ad revenue. I'm not shitting on them or like dancing on their grave or anything. I'm just explaining the financial reality of running a proper business on YouTube. They do have their Patreon, but up until this week where they made their desperate call, and if you watch the video, it is very desperate. It was only pulling $800 a month. Oh. This is all in Australia, Ooh. by the way, so it's about 25 Damn, have they tried like streaming or something? Like. I, I feel like there would be a lot of people supporting them on stream. I agree. Because I feel like they would have gotten so much revenue from that. No, they don't stream. They don't stream. This is like one of the b biggest avenue of income they literally decided not to do. That's so weird. That is a very weird business decision. Especially with the team of five, like if if they would have been streaming like let's say five people, right, once a week, that's five streams a week, and not all of them have to be like the miniature painting. If they would have like just stream talking about the lore, playing Warhammer games, Warhammer news, there's so much Warhammer content that they could have done on stream. I feel like people would have loved it. Like, or they can. They can't even like do speculation on Warhammer lore. Yeah. Warhammer fans are so diehard. As long as you love the franchise, they're there to support you. So it, it just, it's sad to see that they did not even like tap 
into like the potential they could have done percent lower than the US dollar. It is now soared up to 3k and hopefully goes higher after this video if you guys are feeling generous and like Tabletop Times content. I mean I personally did join their Patreon to support them as well because they are fucking legends but even going up to 3k a month isn't a crazy amount for what they need. They would only cover like maybe half of one of their salaries. So their regular income just isn't there. I know they do commissions but putting too much time into those commissions means mm. less time working on the channel. Yeah. And if they try to make content out of those commissions then they risk the video flopping since they're not the ones actually controlling controlling the content in that regard. When they did their call to action to save tabletop time, their priority was the Patreon, not driving people to commission stuff through them. I mean, I hate to do it, everyone does it right, but mm. the biggest way you can help us in this journey is uh, if you ever consider joining our Patreon, that would be it. So it makes it clear where they want to make their money. They did mention their Kickstarter they did of the Space Bears, which made $180,000, which mostly would have been profit as they were only selling the digital files. But all that did was extend the lifespan of the channel for another 10 months or so. Um, Jazza also said he never took a dollar out of the company despite owning it for three years. And I can proudly say I have never taken an ounce of profit from Tabletop Time. So overall the financial situation is shit and as a result of that the Tabletop Time team have all had to go part time as a last ditch effort to save money and give themselves a bit more time to make things work. So what went wrong? Well it's not entirely clear if Tabletop Time was ever profitable or if they were managing to just stay afloat and have only now tipped over the edge due to Warhammer not being as popular in the YouTube algorithm as it was in the past few years. Although it's fun to blame the algorithm, it feels like a good way to avoid blaming yourself for your own mistakes. I also think that the YouTube algorithm is a monster. Like I, I think that it, if you don't, if people don't watch two of your videos, you're gone. Uh, we have so many subscribers who'll be like, oh, we weren't interested in those two. I mean, yeah and no, YouTube algorithm can definitely be brutal, but at the same time, I feel like they skipped on, on so many potential revenue sources things so now we just don't see your videos anymore so it's it's really it's not forgiving the tabletop time have made mistakes and they've missed opportunities firstly their team is just too big five staff members for a channel that has likely never been profitable is wild if they really needed those three team members to be the face of the brand and be the manpower then one of them should have also doubled as the editor another should double as the artist and the third should double as the business manager with Jazza acting as an overarching support that gives them direction and ties it all together. Now I'm not a Warhammer hobbyist YouTuber, so I can't say what content they should have made that could have done better, but a lot of their new content seems very all over the shop, with each thumbnail being wildly different, as if it was made for a different channel. All of this wouldn't really matter though if they actually created a product that they could sell. Yes, mm. the algorithm isn't loving Warhammer content right now. I've felt that, Luton has felt that, Squidma has felt that. Views are down across the board. Or even, like, I might be out of line with that suggestion or even auctioning the things they were doing for that video. But Tabletop Time is the only one who's on the brink. The reason why I'm not too bothered by views being a little bit down right now is that my main income source isn't tied to my view count. My AdSense revenue makes up the smallest pillar of my income. Squidma has done multiple highly successful Kickstarters. Luton has about zero costs as the man doesn't show himself on camera, edits his own videos, and is just cruising. If your business only works when the sun is shining, then you're one storm away from getting turbo fucked. Mm. The fact that Tabletop Time ran a successful Kickstarter and then that was that, they didn't use that money to do another Kickstarter or grow their range is wild to me. Also, the fact that their Kickstarter was STL only was also bizarre. Mini Wargaming, a channel that is borderline dead and also has a team, managed to make over $1.5 million off a of Kickstarter because they offered their product as a physical thing and they spent the extra time making it look pretty then you there you go other revenue sources yeah not many people have 3d printers i mean fuck they could have contacted me and i would have been able to do all their physical fulfillment through major minis the space bears kickstar would have made hundreds of thousands more now they have teased that they wish to make their own game with more factions and do more kickstarters which is smart but they're going to be fighting an uphill battle with that one since they are now all part time and the channel is at a low point views wise. Tabletop time seems like a case of a group of extremely passionate dedicated hobbyists doing what they love but fucking suck at business and I say that endearingly not to be a dick. They've also waited until the very last moment when everything is fucked and they have to take a step back before finally sounding the alarm and trying to genuinely save it. Now Tabletop Time do talk a lot about how running a YouTube business with full-time employees makes things harder and riskier, but only if you suck at business. I have full-time employees, Squidma has full-time employees, I mean, and I would say- look, He said it, he said it endearingly. Yeah, look, he might sound harsh, but what he's saying is true. 
say that the only reason why I can run a stable, profitable business is via my YouTube is because I have full-time employees. Using Squidmire again as a comparison for tabletop time, both make hobbyist content for Warhammer, both have a team, both have the same potential. However, tabletop time seems like they're still throwing shit at a wall and seeing what sticks. Squidmore, on the other hand, has consistent thumbnail styling. They stick to their beloved video formula. Mm -hmm. If a type of video does well, they will make follow-ups in similar styles. But most importantly, Squidmore is constantly working on their next big project, whether that be an insane diorama, a wildly successful Kickstarter, or a new six series. Their standard day-to-day -day content just keeps the engine hot. Tabletop time, on the other hand, just straight up aren't doing any of these things. Their biggest project was one guy modeling a small army for them, and then they just sold the STLs. That quite literally takes zero effort on their behalf. Now, as I've said, I'm not trying to kick them while they are down, but they need to hear this. Something dramatic has to change, otherwise they'll just keep burning through cash, and eventually, well, not even eventually, soon, Jazza is going to have to close tabletop time, and then they are fucked. In their video, they talk as if they have tried everything and it isn't really their fault. And at the out like hearing that they weren't even like pre planning and doing the whole future one month, three month, half a year, and a year plans is honestly surprising. Like, no matter how big or small you are, you always need to pre plan. Like, you guys have no idea. Like, I have a notebook literally next to me. It's a roadmap of our next six months of all the stuff that we'll be working on and adding. Deep planning hey, is so important. Ruining them. We've tried these different formats. We've tried doing different ways of making content. And um, unfortunately, in the current climate, nothing's worked. It's not a good feeling when you try like really hard a lot of different ways and all of them don't work. But that is the attitude that has gotten them to the brink. They need to start taking the money side of YouTube more seriously. I was a guest at a seminar last year for a group of upcoming content creators about the business side of YouTube and almost all of them were surprised that YouTube wasn't just this easy walk in the park to glory. It's a business like any other. Oh no, no, no. YouTube is not easy whatsoever. It is not. It's literally swimming in, in an ocean full of sharks. It took me literally weeks of hate comments to realize that's not what I need to concentrate on. I need to concentrate on people who actually want to have the productive discussion with me about games, about lore, about where games are heading. Like, I had to even mentally adjust myself, what I put priority in. I'm not special, tabletop time isn't special, being a YouTuber doesn't exclude you from profit and loss. We're definitely not special, all we do is react and put our thoughts, that's it. Expenses, tax, wages and so on. So where should they go now? Well, I genuinely want these guys to get through this. As I've said, I joined their Patreon and I believe they deserve a second chance. I'm hoping some of you do the same. That money should be used to keep them going so they can release a new product or Kickstarter, one that is higher effort than their previous STL only Kickstarter. They need to worry less about AdSense, Patreon and views and more about ambitious, sustainable, profitable projects and releases. These are good, passionate people and I genuinely hope they can rebuild and keep going by prioritizing what is actually important for running a sustainable business. Link to their Patreon Patreon is below. Speaking of big ambitious projects, I have some awesome shit coming for you guys and gals soon so keep an eye out. I also want to massively thank everyone again for the success of the Raven Lord Trader Hunter Ooh. launch. We've stopped production on them and are now just letting the few final dozen sell out naturally. Link for your last chance to grab one is below. Peace. Why does he always do that though? It's like a bro when he does that. <laughs> Good video. Um, I will drop their link in case any of you is interested in supporting like i i do agree they do deserve another shot um what will matter is what they do with a shot